Part of the process of creating a user-defined mapping for model transforms between domains is the specification of the SysML artifacts and relations that form one side of the transform. This video discusses some of the issues behind this, independent of whether the transform is to Jira, Doors, Team Center, or any of the other tools that support custom mappings in Syndea. A Syndea model transform connection enables us to take a model element in one tool, such as Rhapsody, and use it to generate a related element, such as a Jira issue in another tool, or to do the same thing in reverse from Jira to Rhapsody. Frequently, that other element has attributes that we want to share with the SysML element. Special SysML stereotypes give us a way to store those attributes by adding them as tag values to the base SysML element type. If I add the Jira transform stereotype to the SysML element with the tag values ID, priority, status, and version, I can create a Syndea mapping between these and equivalent attributes of the Jira issue. Not only are the values of these attributes carried over in the initial model transform, they can be compared and updated in many cases as the models change over time. If the SysML element is a block, we have the option of storing some of those attributes as value properties, if that serves our use case better. The question then arises, how is the stereotype incorporated into the mapping? Syndea provides two options when the artifact is specified, and when the mapping is specified. We will demonstrate both approaches and discuss the differences. When we open the Syndea dashboard to the Mapping tab, the left column contains a list of artifact and relation types for the different integrated tools at the top and a list of mappings between tools at the bottom. If we expand the SysML category, we see a list of artifact types the A group, and relation types, the R group, that have already been specified. These were loaded from the syndea.mappings file in your .syndea folder. Your list may look different from this, but the object of this video is to make you able to add, delete, and edit entries as needed. As an example, I will add a new artifact type to the list, Activity Test Plan. I right-click the SysML category heading and select Add Artifact Type. I will choose Activity as the base type, but I will add an additional stereotype, Test Plan. This stereotype comes from a profile called Syndea Tutorial Mappings that I loaded into my SysML model, but it could also be a stereotype that you created. Just remember that any syndea.mappings files and any profiles or stereotypes that you create should be distributed together. I will give the artifact type a distinctive name and description and click OK. The new artifact type appears on the list and its characteristics on the right. We see the type and stereotype that define it, and we see a list of attributes available for mapping. These attributes are from the test plan stereotype. If I click on the activity artifact type, it has no additional stereotypes applied and no attributes available for mapping. We can see similar effects for block type SysML artifacts. Block has only a few attributes. Block test case has many more because of the added test case stereotype. However, block and requirement are special cases in defining artifacts. They require that we add the block or requirement stereotype directly when we define the base artifact type and the more specialized types. This is not true for other standard SysML elements including activities, state machines, use cases, and so forth. So when do we want to apply the stereotype in defining artifact type? Well, first, 
When the artifact type represents a standard concept in our SysML modeling from the beginning, part of our ontology. In our example, I decided that activity test plan was going to be a standard SysML element type I would use whenever I created an activity intended to be a test plan. Mappings intended for test plans would only apply to this type of SysML element. The use of specialized artifact types reduces ambiguity in defining complex mappings. As demonstrated in the TM4J videos, we can define the transform shown here between SysML and JIRA with TM4J as a single mapping, including both artifacts and relations. However, if all three blocks on the left are just blocks without additional stereotypes, the transform from left to right would be ambiguous. Finally, the first option allows us to include the value properties as part of mappings when the SysML element has a base type of block. To add a value property to the list of mappable attributes, I right-click on an artifact type, choose Add Edit Attribute Definition, click Plus, and add an attribute with the MetaType value property. The alternate approach is to specify the special stereotype as part of the mapping. Let's create a mapping from a SysML activity to a new feature in JIRA. On the lower left side, we right-click SysML JIRA, choose Add Mapping, set source and target artifact types, name and description for the mapping, children recursive, and include attributes. Now I add the Jira Artifact Stereotype to the mapping. When I click Retrieve Available Attribute Definitions and start to add rows, a whole list of source, that is, SysML attributes that come from the JIRA artifact stereotype are available to map to corresponding JIRA new feature attributes. When a stereotype is specified in this way, as part of a mapping, it is only applied to the SysML element when the model transform actually takes place, when the JIRA issue is pushed to create a block in SysML, or when the block is pushed to JIRA to become a new issue. In this sense, it is applied on the fly as needed and does not require that the SysML modelers use that stereotype in their modeling beforehand. It is more flexible and allows multiple stereotypes to be applied to the same element in different mappings. In addition to this major option, there are other troubleshooting issues in defining SysML artifacts. First, Sundea recognizes artifacts by ID, not name. If your SysML model does not have the stereotype used in a mapping or artifact definition, or it has a stereotype of the same name but different ID, your mapping window will look like this, with the name of the stereotype blank and the mapping will not work. As stated earlier, it is good practice to distribute your Sendea.mappings file and your special stereotypes profile together to other users to prevent this. Avoid creating more than one artifact of the same type stereotype combination. This is true for SysML artifacts or any of the other tools, even if the artifact names and other characteristics are different. 
duplicate artifact types create problems when Zendaya tries to identify the correct mapping to apply. Having an artifact of type block and another with type block and stereotype test plan is fine, but two artifacts of type block are not. Finally, be careful about attribute values when defining mappings. The APIs of the target tools, the non-SysML tools you are interfacing to, all have their special features. In some cases, some attribute values are required when creating a model element in the target tool. These attributes must be part of the mapping for that use case. Other attribute values can't be set through the API. They are assigned automatically when the target model element is created. In yet other cases, the attribute values in the target tool are enumerated lists, and the attribute value in SysML must be a member of that list to transfer successfully. When developing a mapping, it is valuable to have some understanding of the target tool API, or be resigned to some trial and error. SysML relation types should also be added to the list when relationship mapping is used. Many of the basic SysML relationships may already be available in the Syndea.mappings file, as we have here. Adding a new relation is straightforward. Right-click the SysML category heading, go to Add Relation Type, and add the type, name, description, and any stereotypes. The nomenclature for type is important. Use one from the list here, and note the lack of spaces in these type names. Some others require adding a stereotype, such as verify on top of an abstraction base type. More training materials on creating and using user-configurable mappings are found in the individual tool sections, such as JIRA, Team Center, and so on. We would appreciate your feedback on the self-paced Sendea training package. Submit your comments through the online help desk at www.intercax.com help.